Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank and praise God for this wonderful privilege and access that the Lord has given to me to stand before you all and share the word of God. I really enjoy the presence of God here through the worship. God has been speaking to us. The Spirit of God was really touching our hearts and uh, revealing the truth and, the, and revealing the love of God. Hallelujah. We sang that our God is able to overcome any challenges in our life. He strengthened us and His power is able to lift us up from any darkness or the pit like Joseph was put in. Hallelujah. God is able to bring us out. Hallelujah. God is able to bring the light into the darkness of our life. Hallelujah. Our God is able. Amen. We have, we have been singing and worshiping God in truth and in spirit. And I could really enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit in the house of the Lord. And uh, now is the time for us to meditate from the word of God. Let us all be in the presence of God with the uh, a prayerful attitude so that the Spirit of God will speak to us. Let's open our heart and submit ourselves to God so that He can speak to us. Hallelujah. How many of you are really enjoying the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. I know that people of God are joining us through different media like Zoom and YouTube and all. God bless you. Hallelujah. Our God is able to speak through the media. Amen. Our God is able to do great, great wonders and signs even through the media. Hallelujah. There is nothing that is a hindrance for God to do his miracle, uh, miracles and his grace and, he, uh, and to pour out his love upon us. Hallelujah. Give a shout of praise and let us welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit into our heart. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit that speak to our heart. When we're hearing the sermon, uh, we, are, we, we should not be in the presence or we should not be just thinking like uh, uh, somebody is speaking to us or the man of God is speaking to us. Rather, believe and trust in the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will directly talk to you. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals the treasures and the mysteries of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, let's cling to the cross of Calvary, let us cling to the presence of the Holy Spirit and pray that the Spirit of God will talk to you directly. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God has appointed me with the message that I need to deliver to you. Hallelujah. And I trust and I completely depend on the feet of Jesus and I completely surrender myself to the Lord that He may speak to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Let's pray to God that he may speak to us. Hallelujah. Let's surrender our heart, prepare our heart in the presence of God before the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that as we sitting in the presence of the Lord and our, um, we are listening to the word of God, the Spirit of God may take complete control and speak to our heart. Lord, we are ready to listen to you, Lord Master. Lord, we, we want to prepare our hearts so that the word of God that will be, uh, that, that is, that is being delivered will be good seeds that have been sowed into the prepared land. And that will bring a lot of fruits and that will bring a lot of harvest. Hallelujah. Lord Master, we surrender ourselves and we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to bring the word of God this evening to you all. And the title of the message for the day is the peace of God. Say amen. The peace of God. Hallelujah. I really think and I really believe that the contemporary lifestyle, the peace has a great, uh, uh, great um, uh, things to speak out. Hallelujah. It is something that's really worth to speak and it is really something worth to listen as well. Because when we look into the world around the nation, we can see that unrest and the turmoil that been uh, covered in almost every nation. So people are not having a joy and happiness in 
their life. They are not finding the peace anywhere in the world. And the people are looking for peace everywhere, everywhere but they are not finding the right peace and so that they can take rest and they can, be, uh, they, they, they can, they can rejoice. So the fact is that all around the world, the peace has been lost. Amen. But the word of God assures that the peace of God that cannot be compared to the, the peace that the world is offering. Hallelujah. So the peace that coming from God and the peace that brings to that that comes from the world. There are a lot of difference between these two, these two pieces that have been offered. Hallelujah. So I want to clearly tell you with us uh, through the spirit of God uh, about the peace of God and the peace that has been offered by the world. Amen. So let us turn our attention to gospel according to John chapter 14 verses 27. So from 25th onwards, God is speaking about the gift of, gift of the peace from God. Amen. The gift of peace peace from Christ and verse number 27 it is written like this Jesus says to his disciples peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid amen the peace that the that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ offering is having a great assurance that it will really take out all our fears and heart and the troubles that we go through. Just think about the peace. When do we really enjoy the peace? When we are happy, we enjoy the peace. When we are not troubled, we enjoy the peace. When we are not hearing about the war, we enjoy the peace. When we see that things all around is going very smooth and clear, then we feel the peace. Amen? Hallelujah. And when do you see the unrest, which is the antonym of peace, or the turmoil, or the distress? We, when we hear about war, when we hear about fear, when we hear about troubles, when we hear about intolerance, we understand that we are not going through the peace that we require or we are looking for. Amen. That is the reason Jesus said, I leave my peace with you. The people of God has a great assurance from our Lord and see with Jesus Christ that he has gifted us the peace that comes from the heaven. Hallelujah. How many of you are happy to, to enjoy the peace of God? It doesn't mean that you are not, you will not go through troubles in your life. It doesn't mean that you, you will not have any ups and downs in your life. Doesn't mean that you will be you will not be rejected. It doesn't mean that you uh, you know you, you will not be you you will be you will be always loved by others. It means that when you go through the distress, when you go through the troubles, when you go through the darkness, when you go through the valley of shadow of death, you don't need to fear for the peace of God is with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is the of that, that is that is what God has gifted us. That is what Jesus has offered us. The peace that passes all understanding of men. Amen. Thank you, Master. So when we read this passage, or when we read or go through this this passage, we can really understand that maybe Jesus knows that. At certain point of time, my disciples and the people who are following him have to go through some sort of troubles, may have to go through some sort of fear in their life. And we really know that after Jesus resurrected and, resurrected and uh, ascended to heaven, they were all waiting for um, the Holy Spirit and they, were, they have uh, received the Holy Spirit. And later on as well, when they were uh, sharing the gospel to the world and uh, 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 making the people, baptizing them and uh, making them into the church, 
they has to, they have to go through troubles and uh, uh, pressure from the from the world and the politician and uh, uh, the rulers of the world the king the authorities and the rulers of the world and they started fearing and it's clear and it is written in the uh, book of acts acts of apostle it is written that they were they started fearing and they were all um, you know uh, again came, came back and uh, started together sitting in a room and they started praying and again the holy spirit came down to them and uh, made, made them strengthen and strengthened them they and they started uh, preaching the gospel of god without fear so the thing that takes away our peace is trouble is distress is fear therefore in the in the, the word of god it is written 365 times that do not fear do not be afraid for i am with you hallelujah when jesus says i leave peace with you that means i leave myself with you amen i am with you and i thank god that the holy spirit is in control and during the worship time uh, uh, pastor bahima has brought us the character joseph while she was exhorting from the word of god and it is written when you go through uh, the genesis chapter 40 to 50 you can clearly understand that when joseph was going through the distress rejection and a uh, lot of problems and challenges in his life it is clearly written the word of god that god was with him god was continued to be with him praise the lord when he was rejected by his brothers when they start putting him into the pit when they start when they sold them for, to the egyptians when he was in that um, in the in in in, in that marketplace being sold god was with him when he was accused for no reason no sin god was with him when he was put into the prison god was with him when he was revealing the mysteries and the, uh, the the meaning of the dream to the people in that in that prison god was with him when we ha- he, when he was brought to the pharaoh god was with him when he was appointed as the second ruler on all, for all the egyptian the minister for the egyptian god was with him when his brothers came to joseph asking for bread god was with him when joseph started showing his compassion and love to his brothers whom he had whom whom had rejected joseph god was with him when when he sent all the chariots and bring jacob to egypt along with the entire family god was with him my dear brothers and sisters who are listening to the word of god this evening let me tell you and let me remind you from the from the word of god by filled by the holy spirit that no matter what the circumstances that you are going through no matter what the situation that you are you are facing and your challenges that you're facing you're going through the troubles and distress that you're going through the rejection that you're going through one thing i want to remind you that the peace of god the peace of god and the god himself is with you for this is the assurance of the holy spirit this is assurance of our lord and savior jesus christ the peace of god be with you amen let me move forward quickly um god has given me a lot of words from the word of god and i want to uh, bring to your attention so that uh, you can meditate later on as well and uh, even when you're going in a uh, in a, in a distress or in a situations of challenges in your uh, lifetime in the future also you can come back to these words and find rest and find relax and and uh, and get peace from god and uh, may god bless you for that hallelujah may god enable for you that hallelujah all right so let's move forward and jesus said like this i leave with you my peace peace i leave with you my peace i give to you lord okay so let's think about this way jesus has offered us peace 
yes and all the nation all the rulers all the politicians around the world is also speaking about peace that's the second offer of the uh, uh, of peace or the peace that is being offered by men or the people of the world so if you compare these two which one is stable is it the peace that the world is offering is stable or the peace that the lord has offered you is stable so this is i leave this with you for your um, uh, thought process and you start meditate on this thing and uh, find an answer from god the peace that been offered by the politicians is temporary has no base it's not stable one day they offer the peace the next day they talk about war instability the peace that the world is offering has an instability but the peace that the lord jesus offer as stability for the last 20 centuries this word of god is bringing peace to many people oh it brings a peace and rest to lot of people and families around the world give a shout of praise to god hallelujah amen and jesus clearly states this i my peace i give to you not as the world gives do i give to you you cannot compare the peace that i give to you with the peace that has been offered by the world come on church the peace of god is exclusive only the people who people of god who can uh, who can come to jesus can really really enjoy this peace amen jesus also said like this we read that in matthew chapter 11 verses 28 let me bring to your attention matthew chapter verse 11 verses 28 come to me all you who are labor and are heavily laden and i will give you rest amen what is this all about it's all about peace due to the pressure of the work the heavy laden due to the labor people lose their peace you can easily understand what i'm tra- and trying to say through the media people start sharing their uh, bad experience the bitter experience through from their workplace people who are going through a um, lot of troubles in their workplace and all so jesus calls them come unto me and i will give you rest i will give you peace there is no one in this world who has offered such a peace so let's take this opportunity and realize the fact that this is jesus calls jesus is calling you to the peace so that you could enjoy the presence of god you could enjoy the the peace of god throughout your life amen praise the lord thank you master let's uh, read another words from the word of god uh, that is in um, uh, uh, that is in the luke uh, chapter 2 so luke chapter 2 talks about the peace that was given at the birth of jesus jesus we all know that jesus birth was after the fulfillment as a fulfillment of the prophecy amen after as as a fulfillment of the promise of the father in heaven through his prophets years ago centuries ago amen and we all know uh, what is written in asia chapter um, uh, 9 verse 16 we will go to that and we'll come back to luke 2 so that i think that's better so let's read asia chapter 9 verse 6 yeah 
Isaiah chapter 9, 9 verses 6 says like this. For us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. The God is speaking to his prophet Aisha centuries ago and sharing a mystery, sharing that something going to happen after his life, after his death, and even after many centuries. A son, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And his name will be Prince of Peace. Amen. No one in this world has been called as Prince of Peace. But our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his name was Prince of Peace. And his name is Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's turn our attention to Luke chapter 2. And if you go through entire chapter, uh, Luke chapter 2, you can clearly understand what was happened during the birth of Jesus. Amen. Let's read the words 14 from Luke chapter 2. Glory to God in the highest and on our peace, goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. For the prince of peace has born in the, in the, in the city of Beth, in, the, in the city of David, which is Bethlehem. Amen. The prince of peace has been born in the city of Bethlehem or city of David. Hallelujah. So at the birth of Jesus, there was peace. So when the, when, when the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ take birth in your heart, you find peace. Simple as that. Amen. So I would insist you to take a decision this evening. If you have not ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Jesus has never born in your heart, then this is your right opportunity. Make use of this effectively and wisely. The Prince of Peace, which is Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, want to take birth in your heart. Glory in the highest. The moment a person receives Jesus Christ as his personal savior and accept him as his master, there will be a great joy in the heaven and that is the reason it is written, glory in the highest, glory in the heaven, glory in the presence of God, glory in the presence of the throne of grace and the peace on earth and the peace on your heart. For the Prince of Peace take birth in your heart. Amen. The peace of God is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Amen. I want to prove it. I want to prove that Jesus Christ himself is the peace from the word of God. We all know that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. And also, we know that God is love. Now, I want to prove that God is peace. I want to prove that Jesus Christ is peace. Amen. Let's turn our attention to Ephesians. Ephesians. Uh, when, when Paul is writing this, uh, this epistle, it is written like this, the, about the, about the uh, peace. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14. Let me read it for you. Christ our peace. That is the heading which is written in my NKJV version of this um, a Bible. Okay. Uh, Christ our peace. That's a great thing to read and great thing to uh, announce. Hallelujah. Christ our peace. For he 
himself our peace who jesus christ son of the living god amen he himself is our peace my beloved brothers and sisters in christ let me tell you let me ask you in fact do you really find the peace in christ or not do you really find peace in your heart or not when you go through the distress when you go through the rejection or when you go through the problems and trials and troubles and challenges in your life do you really find the peace and rest amen if not tonight you start meditate about this are you able to find peace in spite of all the challenges that are that you are going through in your christian life or you are you are you are the moment uh, you go through the troubles you start cursing the day you are, you start cursing your parents you start cursing your family members you start um, uh, talking the unnecessary things and you start and you start losing your peace and you become so angry and furious or no that that that, that if if you go through that that means you do not have peace in your heart what is the symptom of peace simple question what is the symptom of peace is joy happiness calm quiet cool control self control the self control comes to the peace of god if you're losing your control that means you do not have peace in you that means god is not with you that's clear let's think about joseph and his life and his experience on the other day i got this a small video in our whatsapp group shared by one of our uh, uh, sisters in our church it was showing about the experience of joseph when i see that visualization of uh, the rejection that joseph was going through i literally start crying a youngest of that home is rejected by his brothers the moment he comes his brothers start frustrated because his father was loving him most see you are a child of god loved by god but you are a reason for a distress in others life a, a frustration in others life this, this could happen to anyone but at that moment what is your what is your um, mentality and how do you think about it how do you judge on that moment if god is with you you will not behave like the brothers behaved to joseph joseph did not behave the way the his brothers behaved to him and that is the reason after certain years at the age of 30 when joseph was became the minister in the egypt because of the famine in israel his brother started coming for food and bread and groceries and grains in the land of egypt the moment he recognized his brothers unfortunately his brothers were not able to recognize him this is a true fact so i want to do reveal a mystery here which god holy spirit has given to me right now which is the people who has no peace in them the people who has no god with them or god is not with them suppose they cannot understand realize recognize the one who has god with them amen that is the reason his brothers were not able to recognize joseph from the word of god it is clear that god was with joseph but his brothers 
his own brothers were not able to recognize after several years few years later they were not able to recognize joseph though god was with him which means it's quite difficult and it's quite natural that the people who has no peace with them people who has who doesn't have god with them people who has who who doesn't have jesus with them cannot understand the one who has god with them and that is the reason many many a times we preach the gospel of christ and share the word of god around the world through different medias only few are there to accept and listen to the word of god and change their um, lifestyle many of the people rejects the word of god and the counsel of god unfortunately they are not able to find the rest they are not able to find the peace and they are not able to recognize god who is with the anointed persons amen hallelujah so let me come back to peace again so christ for he himself for christ himself is our peace from ephesians chapter 2 verses 14 who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation if jesus is the peace then you should become the peacemaker amen because if jesus is is with you you have to be a peacemaker so i was asking you what is the symptom of peace right so that when there is a trouble comes the peace of god which is offered in your heart should start come out and say that calm down it's not a problem be free be free be, be quiet god is able god is seeing him. god is watching over us he knows what is going through us and he is able these are the words uh, that will come out of a man who has peace within his heart do not be afraid for jesus has assured that don't afraid don't be afraid i am with you and i will bring you that words as well and um, when his disciples were fearful and were in that room jesus came after his dis- resurrection and said that peace be unto you all this is written in uh, i think this is written in um, uh, uh, matthew Ma- Ma- matthew i think it's in matthew sorry john 2019 okay let's read that 2019 john 2019 all right so this is after the resurrection of jesus and this is what happened um the uh, the jesus then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the jews jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them peace be with you amen jesus thank you lord again he says that peace to you as a father has sent me i also sent you see in verse 20 when it is written that so jesus said to them again peace to you if you come back to the first words that we have read from john chapter 14 verses 27 it is written like this let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid basically the reason we cannot find peace in us is due to the fear in our heart in jesus name hallelujah so people of god let me remind you the peace of god that takes out all your fear the complete love cast out the fear amen let the peace of god take complete control in your life hallelujah amen so uh, as we read from ephesians chapter 2 uh, jesus himself 
is our peace. And again, one more word I wanted to uh, bring to your attention from the same epistle, chapter 2, verses um, uh, 17. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. Well, uh, this is really interesting, right? Uh, you, as you know, I am standing in the church which is situated in the uh, southmost of uh, India, uh, called a state called Kerala. And our local place is Muatubara, which is near to Cochin. And uh, I have people, few people sitting in this room and I preach the peace. The title of this today's message is the peace of God. And the word of God says like this. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. And I really know that in the Zoom meeting, people from different parts of India has joined. From Punjab, from Rajasthan, from Bangalore, from Pune and different locations of India and even abroad has joined in this meeting. Amen. People who are near and people who are far off. To both, Jesus preached the peace same way by the, by, the, by, the, by the help of the Spirit of God this evening. I also preach the peace of God to you. To the people who are close to me and the people who are so far away from me. Let the peace of God take complete control in your life. Let the peace of God take place in your heart. Let not your heart be troubled and do not be afraid of anything. Amen. Respecting of the troubles that you are going through, if you can hold your heart, if you can control yourself, emotions and your expressions and your anger, that means... It is the peace of God that takes complete control in your life. Amen. That is assurance. Next time, when you go through trouble, try to apply this in your life. Amen. The peace of God that is free of cost. You don't need to go and buy any medicine. You don't need to go to the medical shop and pay for the peace that is free of cost. You just need to open, your, open the word of God and read wherever it is written about peace, you will really understand that. Do not be fear, for I am with you. And do not be troubled, for the peace of God is with you. Amen. I have a few more words that I wanted to bring to your attention um, by the, by, by, by that, 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 that the Spirit of God is compelling me to share to you. Amen. So, let's, uh, let's read those um, a few words and I, will, I would like to conclude after reading those, um, mess, uh, the, those verses from the word of God. Okay, so let's read uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 15. What it is written? Ephesians chapter 6 verses 15, it is, is written like that. Uh, gospel of peace. I really like that phrase. Gospel of peace. Amen. So the gospel brings you peace. It is the gospel that Jesus was started preaching at the land of Galilee, at the seashore of Galilee, and in everywhere in Judea, and even in Samaria, and in all the places that when he went through, he started sitting up on a, um, on, on a mountain top and started preaching the, uh, the, the sermon on the hill. Amen. I think it is that, that, that that's a phrase. Sermon on the hill. Let's read that verse as well. Let's read that verse from Matthew chapter 5 verse 19. Blessed are the peacemakers. Let's read that. Matthew chapter 5 verses 9. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are connecting the words. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you are really speaking to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you are really speaking to the hearts this evening. Amen. 
Hallelujah. What is the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which is written in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 16. 9 verse 6. He is the Prince of Peace. And what is written here? If you are a peacemaker, you will be also called as the sons of God. Through peace, God has offered you a great privilege to be called as the son of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Such a marvelous thing to speak. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. What is the effort that you need to put to become a peacemaker? Simple question. What you need to do really to become a peacemaker? Which is better or which is easy is to cook a meal or to become a peacemaker? As simple as that. To become a peacemaker, you need to keep quiet. First thing. First thing is, you need to keep quiet. Your quietness will bring peace from God. For God has said like this, be quiet and know that I am God. Sons of God will think about it like this. When the trouble come, I will not speak. When the unrest come, I will not speak. When the problem comes, I will not speak. When the issues come, I will not speak. When there is a financial problem, problem I will not speak. When there is a problem due to the diseases or issues like um, anything, anything, let it be anything, any issues, I will not speak. Be quiet and know that God, He is God. Amen. I am God. That is how it is written. He is God. He is God means He is the author of peace. And He shall give you the peace. Be quiet. He shall give you the peace. Amen. Apply next time in your life. When the distress come. When the issues come. When the challenges come. Be quiet. Your silence can bring peace from God. Hallelujah. Your silence and your quietness and your meditation can bring peace from God. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Let me go further. Let's, uh, let's wait for the next uh, uh, counsel of God or the, uh, or the message of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have read, uh, read from um, Ephesians chapter 16. Uh, it is like this. Um, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, chapter 6 verse 15. Okay. So it is written like this. Um, uh, uh, yes. Having shoed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Okay. So in order to get some peace, if you... If you really want to speak, okay, listen to me. When you, when, when you go through the problem, troubles, if you really want to pe uh, speak, then, then start speak gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He has came down from uh, leaving all the glory and all the likeness of father in heaven and he came down to the world and lived and did greater great wonders and signs and healed healing and um, given um, a life back to people who were dead he has risen the people who were dead and he has offered the peace as well the moment you start speaking the gospel there will be peace of god start apply it in your life when you go through problem in the next time. Okay. So. The preparation. To preach gospel. Is a symptom. Of peace. If you are ready to. Preach gospel. People are looking, looking at you. Is this person is really bringing. Is, is this person is really a peacemaker or not. 
if that person is not a peacemaker the world will never ever accept him as an evangelist so if you want to become a real really good evangelist this is mandatory that you need to be a peacemaker holy spirit i pray this evening if there is anything that uh, that takes away the quality of a peacemaker in my life lord i want that quality back to me this night anybody who want to pray with, along with me this is a time that god is going to give you and renew and restore the peace in you and you will be called as a peacemaker the sons of god peacemakers the sons of god for our master jesus is the prince of peace amen okay so we have read uh, ephesians chapter 16 and let's read um, uh, uh, philippians chapter 4 verses 7 philippians chapter 4 verses 7 what it is written okay uh, so let me let me let me uh, read it from 6 6 and 7 be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god and the peace of god which passes which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through christ jesus amen the next thing that you can apply when you go through troubles distress anxiety depression issues and problems and challenges in your life the word of god gives you an assurance like this be anxious for nothing do not be worried about anything amen but in everything but in everything by prayer and supplication so quietness is a way that you can make peace the second is if you really want to speak then start speak gospel and third is you can also start praying to god so that the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through christ jesus amen why holy spirit is really insisted paul to write the word through christ jesus this is really important because jesus is the prince of peace and through jesus if we get if we get the peace that will be an everlasting peace that will not be temporary peace which is which which is which is offered by the world as jesus assured in john chapter 14 verses 27 it is not the peace that the world is offering to you amen hallelujah so the peace of god that will guard your hearts and minds through christ jesus amen the peace of god that surpasses all understanding all the knowledge of the world all the plans of the world all the plans of these nations and the rulers and uh, uh, and, the, and the authorities you know each time or oh, when there is a problem happens in your area if there is a war like situation or if there is a, a disruption or maybe you know um uh, quite um, uh, un- unrest situation between the people due to any reason this political reason or maybe social reason or any other challenges in the uh, in the in your nation or in your society there will be mediators coming to solve the issues and bring the peace and restore the natural life right if it is against world or the you know adjacent countries obviously there will be more powerful people like you know even the united nations do such like of things i believe you know they are trying the level best to bring peace around the world authorities tries to bring peace around the world amen so what happens uh, what i wanted to say is that they have a plan in their mind they have a pl- 
plan of execution to bring back the peace. That is the reason it is written like this. All with the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. The understanding of men, the knowledge of men can bring peace, but that cannot be a, a, be a, a, a stable one, a lifelong one, an eternal one. It could be a temporary one. And nobody can guarantee uh, what will be the uh, what would be the warranty, or it, it can it, it cannot give you any guarantee or warranty. In fact, okay, amen. Praise the Lord. Let me move forward and conclude the message soon. Right. So the peace of God. That is the title of today's meditation, today's sermon. The peace of God that passes all understanding of men will guard your hearts and minds. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. So the peace that God is offering has a greater impact in your life. That will give you um, eternal peace. And if you, if, you, if, you, if you really want to call to be sons of God. Then you need to become a peacemaker. That's what it is written in the word of God. So let me conclude here. The peace of God. That will guard your heart from all troubles and your mind from all issues and problems. Lord Master, thank you Lord. We have heard to the word of God this evening. We know that the world is going through distress, intolerance, impatience and unrest situation. But it is only through Jesus Christ we could really experience the peace of God. The peace that is offered by God is eternal, it is everlasting. Lord, help us that every time we go through the challenges and issues and problems that takes away our peace, help us to come to the word of God, come to the presence of the Holy Spirit and find the peace from God. The peace that is real. The peace that is stable. The peace that has guarantee and warranty. Lord, we submit ourselves into your mighty hand. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. And thank you, Lord, for uh, revealing the mysteries from the word of God. I pray for all those who are assembled in this meditation. Lord, help them to find the real peace through Jesus Christ. All these things I ask in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We have our pastor, uh, uh, our uh, English, uh, English pastor or the uh, uh, Land of Judah Ministries English uh, pastor whose name is uh, uh, Benjamin Sam will come forward and um, conclude uh, this session and after the, uh, the, with the prayer and benediction, he will conclude as well. Hallelujah. Be, with the, uh, be in the presence of God with um, a peaceful mind so that the Spirit of God can speak to us. Amen. Thank you so much, man of God. And it was amazing to hear God speaking about his presence and in his peace. Amen. I, I strongly believe that uh, there, is, there is tremendous power in the word. Uh, and there was, it, was a, it was like a powerful missile uh, that was uh, ignited uh, and sent to the enemy camp. Because uh, if our peace is disturbed, if the enemy can get hold of our peace and destroy it, he can actually... Uh, you know, take us away from the plan of God in our lives. If, if, if we are not uh, governed or if you're not motivated or if you are not immersed in the peace of God, what happens is that it gives room for the enemy to come to us with his lies. Uh, I, I quickly want to share a testimony today and uh, uh, pray and conclude this session because I don't want to preach anymore. Because the word was so powerful, I don't have anything to preach over it. Uh, today, uh, as we were coming, uh, I happened to talk to a woman uh, of God uh, uh, who, had a, uh, who had to go through a, a time of depression in her life, uh, in, her, in her early teens. And uh, uh, she was telling me that uh, we, were, we were praying for her as a family. As a church, we were praying for her. And uh, when I happened to talk to her today, she was telling me, uh, Pastor, I feel like I lost all my fear somehow. 
I was always afraid of something. I was I was always cert, afraid of certain things, and it was an impact of all the lies of the enemies that was deposited in me. I somehow felt like God has let loose of all that fears. I feel at peace now, and. after i came here pastor ju was telling me that i'm going to preach about the peace of god and i understand it's no coincidence because god is releasing his peace i i i quickly want to read a verse this is from psalms chapter 39 verse 1 uh, 2 and 3 i said i will i i will take heed to my ways that i will not sin with my tongue this is something pastor ju said i just quoting him he said sometimes for the peace of god to flow you have to keep quiet this is what the psalmist says i said i will heed to my ways that i will not sin with my tongue i will keep my mouth with a bridle when the wicked is before me the wicked one is always there to bring unrest he will bring unrest with his words if you if you look at the garden of eden what happened there was the wicked one the serpent he came with wicked words he came there he tried to entice adam and eve basically eve as as we read in the bible she he said this fruit is very good you can eat this you will become like god and she, she started responding to it immediately at the same time she was she was ready and she was responding to it and what it did was it destroyed their peace it destroyed everything that they had they had a perfect family life you know after after she eating the fruit in the evening when god comes and ask adam why are you not coming the first words that come out of adam is this woman whom you gave to me betrayed me and she made me eat the fruit i was wondering that would have been the first fight between that couple you know god is the greatest judge god is the greatest master of all universe before that judge the man is betraying his wife the one who couple of chapters before that said to everyone that uh, listen this is flesh from my flesh and this is born from my born i don't know what happened he said that this woman whom she said he he couple of chapters before said this this is my flesh and my bone she is mine she is come out from me and this same man couple of chapters after this she is saying that i don't even have any relationship with woman you gave this woman to me i don't own her i don't have any relationship and he he is like i don't know this woman betrayed me and i i believe that was the first fight and the 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 enemy was successful in destroying the peace of that family i think from from what the lord has enlightened us through pastor geo and i think it is very practical and it is very powerful because the lord says keep quiet i don't know to whom god is speaking but god is making you let go of your fears he's releasing freedom in this house right now god says no more of the wicked plans of the enemies no more of the wicked 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 words of the enemies you're not going to respond to that as a normal person when the wicked words of the enemy comes to you when he tries to destroy your peace you're not going to respond to it as a normal human being because if you respond you might lose your peace and god through the empowerment of his word right now is filling you with the divine wisdom so that you can control your mouth you can keep quiet you can speak in god's wisdom you can wait to answer the bible says for all your words you should be you should be patient uh, you should be patient to answer and you should be quick to hear that's what the bible says solomon says that you should be quick to hear and should be patient before you respond this is what the verse also say and the verse says i said i will take heed to my ways that i will not sin with my tongue i will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me and the second verse is so powerful out of everything pastor said i feel like the holy spirit is stressing on this point i don't know why I was dumb with silence I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred 
and, and verse 3 I don't want to explain there because we have already run out of time my heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned then I spoke then I spoke with my tongue then I spoke with my tongue he waited he waited till the fire of God burned inside his heart before he opened his mouth before the wicked one when the wicked one came before this man of God to take away his his peace he said I was dumb in silence and I held my peace even from good and he meditated as he was meditating on the goodness of God as he was meditating on the gospel as he was meditating on the work of God as he was meditating on the Calvary and the cross there and the peace of God the fire of God burned inside him and he said and as I was meditating my heart was hot within me while I was musing while I was meditating the fire burned and and then I spoke with my tongue then I spoke with my tongue this is what God is telling you wait until the fire of God burns inside you before you open your mouth and nobody will take your peace away from you when the enemy comes with an irritating word it might be in the form of a sibling it might be in the form of a parent it might be in the form of anybody it might be a spouse it might be a children you never know who it may it might be a pastor it might be a worship leader it might be a church mate it might be a colleague when the enemy comes with a wicked word to take away your peace to destroy your peace God is telling somebody this evening keep quiet keep quiet meditate upon the Lord until the fire of God burns inside you and you will not lose your peace I quickly want to give you a practical example and close this sermon you know all the disciples were inside that room they were inside that room and they were afraid because it was a turmoil situation there it was a time of unrest there was no peace they were afraid that if they go out the Jews might kill them because they were also associated with Jesus so they were afraid which is as pastor preached which is opposite of peace they were afraid they were, they, they were they were in a state of turmoil and unrest and Jesus came and stood between them in the middle of the room and said peace to be with you and before he ascended to heaven he, he said go stay inside the room start meditating do not speak a word do not speak a word wait until you receive power from heaven and then you start speaking oh my god this is powerful Jesus said hold on to your peace remain inside your room keep your mouth shut until the fire of God burns inside you and you know 120 people decided that they're gonna wait for 50 days and they went into the room shut the door and they started meditating and they started music and one day as they were meditating the fire of God fell the fire of God fell upon the 120 oh like split tongues 120 fire of tongues came upon everybody who was seated in the room and they started speaking the word out they started speaking in tongues they started speaking the mysteries of God and everybody gathered around this evening Holy Spirit is telling me to tell somebody hold your peace hold your peace don't speak a word Oh, before the great wall of Jericho Joshua told the people hold your peace hold your peace do not speak a word until I tell you on the seventh day you will see the giant falling hey it might be the wall it might be the people it might be the circumstances that's taking your peace away God says shut up be quiet hold your peace and know that I am God wait till I fill you with my fire wait till your hearts you know you know why why there is unrest and turmoil between the people at that point of time after Jesus resurrection because the people who oppose Jesus are majority 
and the people who are with Jesus are a minority. Only 120 people out of all the people that Jesus uh, ministered. 5,000 men alone ate bread during that multiplication of the bread. So if we calculate at least 20,000 people ate bread. Out of the 20,000 people Jesus fed, only 120 is with Jesus and the majority is against him. And there is unrest. There is turmoil because the majority is against them. You know what happened? They waited till the fire fell on them. They waited till fire fell on them. And after the fire fell, they started speaking. And when, when the fire fell, the man who opened his mouth to curse last evening, when the Bible tells about this man, he opened last time his mouth to curse Jesus and tell people that I have no association with him. His name is Peter, but he kept his mouth shut. He kept his mouth shut and he waited till the fire fell. And after the fire fell, this man stood up and he started preaching the gospel. Not one word of cursing came out of them. Not one word of betrayal came out of this man. What came out of this man was as Pastor Geo preached the mighty gospel. The news about the son of man who is resurrected. And that day, 3,000 were added to the kingdom of God. And the next day, 5,000 was added to the kingdom of God. You know, you wait till fire fall on you and you start speaking. They will become a minority and you will become a majority. Come on, somebody give God mighty praise because God say, hold your peace right now because God is going to turn situations around for you. Let the peace of God fall. Let the fire of God fall. Oh, so that you may speak in the fire of God. You may speak undeniable words, undeniable truths and mysteries about God. So that you will become a majority. They will turn your side. You will not be on their side. They will come to your side in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God fall upon this house. Let the peace of God capture the people who are listening to this message right now. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the word that you've spoken, for the revelation that you've given us, for the promise that you are with us till the end of the days and you have given us our peace. Right now, we might be facing situations where the wicked one is in front of us. He might be poking us. He might be influencing us to speak the wrong words. But as the children of God, as the anointed ones of God, right now we take a decision that will, we will hold on to our peace and we will wait and meditate upon you until the fire falls on us, until you empower us to speak, until you help us to bind the forces of the forces of the enemy, until, until you empower us to tell the lame to stand up in the name of Jesus and until you empower us to tell the blind to see in the name of Jesus until you empower us to preach the gospel and turn multitudes into the kingdom of God till the fire falls, till the empowerment of the Holy Spirit happens. We declare and we decide that we are not going to open our mouth. We are going to wait for the fire of God to fall. And I thank you that you're sending the fire soon because through our supernatural senses we hear a mighty rushing wind, a mighty wave of the Holy Spirit coming and you're going to fill each and everyone who is listening to this message with your fire. You are, you, are, you are empowering everyone with your mighty fire. Thank you for your presence in this house. Thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit in this house. Thank you that you're the King of Peace and the Prince of Peace and you're the everlasting God. Thank you, for Pastor Gio, who brought the word in a powerful manner. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for we moving. We bless everyone who watched through different platforms and who might be watching us late through the YouTube and Facebook platforms. Bless each and everyone. Let the peace of God go with all of them. And may the love of the Father, grace of Son Jesus Christ, sweet coming of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of God be with you all. And be with me and everyone who is listening to this voice till the day the Lord comes back again.
May God bless you. May God bless you. Amen. 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 We love you. See you next Saturday, same time on the same Sumairi. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Amen.